caught me. I'm working an amateur radio uh, contest, and this is a, called a DX contest. It's a contest where uh, you, the goal is to work as many stations other than your own country as possible. Some people even travel to uh, the islands or uh, to set up a station so that um, they have a lot of people wanting to contact them because every contact to another uh, a country or island is, represents another multiplier that uh, builds one's score. So it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the goal is to work as many stations as possible. Right now it's sunny afternoon. Most of the people, um, or, or I took a Sunday afternoon nap. I'm only a part-time contester in that sense. Out of 48 hours, I might just participate like 20 hours or so. This year, I put a little bit more effort into creating a few more antennas than I would ordinarily use. They helped me uh, a, a great deal, especially on the low bands. I would like to uh, take some time to introduce you to uh, what I created for an antenna farm, just temporary for uh, this particular contest. I think a lot of you can identify with living in suburbia, such as where I live. Uh, zoning boards don't take kindly to requests for large antenna farms. As a result, I just have a tribander with a rotatable dipole for 40 meters and a 80 meter dipole for my regular antennas. So I wondered if I could possibly create a high or higher performing antenna for a DX contest. Uh, doing it field day style using temporary uh, antennas. I already have two antenna coax feeds from my shack out to these antennas uh, which go to these wonderful remote antenna switches. This one here on the tower feeds the 80 meter dipole and the 40 meter dipole and the tribander which gives me one open connector for an extra antenna. So I wondered if maybe I could add an antenna to that uh, connection. With the other antenna, with the other coax, which ordinarily feeds a loop, I installed another switch for my listening antennas. I wondered if I could install a couple of beverages in addition to the loop which could help me in receiving. I could control the selection of these antennas with uh, controls here in the shack. For transmitting, I made this vertical last fall. I can set it up in about three hours on a post on my backyard. I really was surprised how much I benefited from this antenna in, uh, in the contest last fall. It's resident for just one band at a time and it's uh, full length vertical for 80 meters. Uh, but for 160, I take a wire from the top, which is connected from the top, and I connect it to the bottom for 80, and I disconnect that wire from the bottom uh, to pull it up with a string to a tree across the way. And using this same coil, I can get a 51 ohm load on 40, for 80 meters and a 42 ohm load on 160 which gives me a perfect SWR at the shack for the bottom of each band. I really like not using a tuner for either of these bands. The downside of any vertical, of course, is that it's so noisy to listen to. I have this one beverage here, which starts at my cousin's barn and runs 500 feet across my lot onto my neighbor's lot. And this, this, of course, is facing Europe, uh, facing the northeast. The other one starts at my tower and goes across my cousin's lot onto a lot beyond, which is a doctor's office. So my uh, beverage, uh, looking toward the west, is on the north side of his parking lot. I really uh, do need to entitle this video as... Uh, in praise of good neighbors who allow me to take advantage of their space. Which also explains why I need to take the antennas down when the contest is over. I just have to say I really learned to appreciate how pleasant it is to listen to 80 and 160 meter signals coming across those beverages with so little noise compared to what I was used to listening to before. 
Finally, I need to share another experiment constructing a very lightweight uh, two element 40 meter beam. Uh, this was my first try at making a 40 meter uh, beam and I tried to make it as light as possible and it of course is too light but it still weighs about 35 pounds and it's really gangly to handle. Each uh, aluminum element is 36 feet long, so I make it full size by adding the proper length of wire off each element. Uh, first of all, I needed to rig up the trailer, which I used for field day, to hoist this antenna into the air. And then I need to stretch out the wire as wide as possible. Uh, doing this, I had excellent SWR across almost the entire 40 meter uh, band. Of course, um, a beam never works well unless the beam is a half wave length above the ground. So I wasn't expecting this anten antenna to work all that well, but I still wanted to try. What I wasn't expecting was that this antenna really influ influenced the SWR of my rotatable dipole, which was like 75 feet away. All of a sudden, I needed to use the tuner with that antenna. So that was a big disappointment. So if I do that again, I will set this antenna up at a different place on my cousin's property 200 feet away from the rotatable dipole. But it still worked every bit as well as the dipole, which is at 56 feet uh, compared to this antenna, which was just 32 feet. And uh, I used it pretty much to run Europe the whole time and use the rotatable dipole to work the islands in the Caribbean. You can see here the results for about 25 hours of work for out of this 48-hour uh, contest. Obviously, the best guys have totals more than three times higher than my numbers, but this was still good for me. Uh, 20 meters, as expected, is usually the best band for me in a contest with uh, 437 QSOs, meaning contacts but you can see why I really like that vertical on 80 meters I used the vertical on 160 Friday evening then switched it to 80 for Saturday night all in all I was able to make 1181 contacts for this year's contacts contest which is a good score for me thanks again for your interest maybe temporary antennas can help you also if you live with the limitations in a suburban environment such as I do. Thanks again.